This, this is uh, Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. We're back again on Friday night. Okay, before we, we announce the guests and everything, I want to give out our toll-free number for anyone who wants to call in and ask any questions. The toll-free number is 877-876-5227. Eight seven seven eight seven six five two two seven, and that number is available all over the United States, and I've heard it's even been available anywhere else too. If anyone does want to call in, but many of you have told me when I've met you at lectures that you'd rather just listen than call, so we'll just see what happens anyway. Okay, before I bring on the guest, I do want to tell everybody again about our conference we're going to be having next week. This is the second transformational conference, and it's being held in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and it's the one that we put on to feature our authors. We had our first one last year, and now we're having our second one this year. The Transformation Conference in Fayetteville, Arkansas at the Clarion Inn on June 16th and 17th. That's Saturday and Sunday. And we're going to have some wonderful speakers. I just want to tell you a little bit about them. Our keynote this year is PMH Atwater. And I know a lot of you people out there know her. She's very famous because she is the world's foremost expert on life after death, and she's written many, many books on the subject, and she's considered the the ultimate authority, and her books are more or less like the Bible on near-death experiences, and they're used in universities and by scientists all over the world, and she's going to be speaking on those subjects, and also she has written the books about the new children, what a lot of people call the indigo children, Although, you know, a lot of us in the metaphysics say we don't like that term, metaf- the indigo children. But they are the new children that are coming in, and she's investigated that. So she's also going to be giving a second talk dealing with the new children. Another one of our main speakers is going to be Carol Pate. Now, Carol is the real psychic detective. She solves about 500 murder cases a year said she works on at least two murder cases a day, and she began working with the police when she was only 12 years old, and uh, she's really something. She has traveled all over the world looking for hidden treasure for people and been under the Sphinx helping the archaeologists find the hidden tunnels, and um, she is a regular on the Court TV Psychic Detective show. And part of her presentation, we are going to show one of the shows that was on the Psychic Detective show where she helped solve uh, serial murder cases. And she was able to do it before the next victim was killed, and she already knew who the next victim was going to be. And we're going to have many, many other wonderful speakers. I try to focus on the speakers on the ones that are the authors that we have published with our company. So uh, we have a great many very good authors, and that's when I try to promote them by this conference. So I'm hoping a lot of you will be able to make it. If you want more information about the conference, look on my website, which has all the information and the contact numbers and everything you need to know. Our website is Ozark Mountain, O Z A R K M T dot com. And our toll free number is 1 800 935 0045. If anyone wants to call in and find out about the conference and about a lot of the other things that we do. Okay, my uh, guest tonight is going to be one of the speakers at the conference. And we just recently published his book, and his book is World Beyond Death. So here again, we're in the subject of life after death. This is going to be one of the things we'll be focusing on during this conference. And the author's name is Grant Peeler, and he lives down around Orlando, Florida. 
I was interested in his book because, as many of you know, um, I, I deal exclusively with reincarnation and hypnosis and uh, hyp hypnotherapy, and I've written books on life after death, including the one called Between Death and Life. And so that's why I was interested in his book, because I found a lot of the things he was saying coincided with what I had found. And that was why I wanted to bring his book out. Okay, but I'm going to let him talk, and <laughs> going to ask him some questions, and we'll find out some more about this interesting subject. Okay, Grant, you're there, aren't you? Uh, yeah, Dolores, how are you tonight? Oh, wonderful. Great. We had a terrible storm this morning just before it got light. Oh, really? Uh, uh, real heavy sure hail, and uh, we were worried about tornadoes. Oh, wow. But my guest last week lived down there in Florida, and she said you had the tropical storm going through whenever she was talking to me last Friday. Uh, yeah, actually, it was good for the area because of uh, uh, the shortage of rain we've had. All the Even fires. The, yeah, the fires and everything spread from Georgia down into Florida. But it, uh, it, uh, so it was a, it was a good thing. It was not, it wasn't a hurricane force. There was no damage <laughs> done. It was good though. So that's what at least yeah, you're in the middle of the state there with Orlando. Isn't uh, it? Actually, I'm just west of Orlando, a wonderful little town called Winter Garden. Uh huh. Yeah. But it's in the vicinity. That's oh, yes, about 15 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Grant. But before we get into the topic of the book, I want okay. you to tell people about yourself, your background. Okay. okay, I've spent approximately about 45 years uh, studying esoteric science. I belong to many of the esoteric schools. Um, but most of what I write about is what I have experienced personally. Yes. Uh, and and also my psychic memories, those things and places that I've witnessed and been able to remember that exist at higher vibrating levels, uh, what we call astral soul, or soul plane, and many other places. There's, most people, they talk about the astral. They might even talk about the soul plane, but very few go beyond that, and there are still many planes of existence beyond that. That's uh, I, that was one of the reasons I wanted to publish your book, because... Uh, you had conscious memories of what it was like yes, to die yes. in the last life and what it was like in between lives. Yes, if uh, if your listeners had, had read this on your on your internet there uh, from the author's pen this month, I had an, a little article about uh, uh, remembering uh, as a child. Uh, the the thing is today. Uh, People say, well, I remember this as a child. I say, well, now, do you really remember it, or did you see it on television? The, the fortunate thing about me is that I had never even seen a television until I was about eight years old. Oh. And uh, actually, I didn't go to the movies until I was about eight either. Uh, but when I was four and five, I'm talking about very strange things. I'm talking about battles that could, you know, that uh, occurred and could be researched. Um uh, and on the, in that uh, particular article, if people want to look it up on the Internet, I actually is a, talked about black holes in space. Of course, I talked from the child's state of mind, you know. Black holes, I don't know if they've even been discovered at that time, you know. But yeah. it, it was strange things that I bring. And another point that you already brought up was that uh, uh, the writers coincide with each other. Yeah. This well, this is wonderful because this shows that the knowledge in the world is finally uh, expanding. Our technology has uh, expanded the leaps and bounds. There is no borders. You can go just as far as you can want to go. But our spiritual knowledge is kept in a box. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very Stone Age and very primitive. And this is a wonderful time uh, that writers can start... Uh, enlightening people and, and telling them uh, about what does exist. And once you get into this book, it, uh, uh, it, it actually gives scientific proof. Uh, one of the things, uh, like I said, I have pre-birth memories, but that's not as unusual as you may think. We all have some sort of pre-birth memory. Sometimes we just need to have a little trouble uh, getting waking it up, 
uh, psychologists have established that the, the brain retains memory of almost everything it experiences. Yes. While much of this is inaccessible to the conscious mind, it can be remembered if we can uh, establish certain memory anchors. Is what I always, In the book, I refer to it as memory anchors. Uh, uh, if you can remember some small part of something, it helps you remember the other events leading up to it. Uh, well, that's but, why I work with the hypnosis, you know, and we yeah. don't to access anything. Yeah. Because it is, you know, maintained as a record in the subconscious mind. Right. And, and I understand psychologists even have a name for it, uh, cryptomnesia. I think it is cryptomnesia. Uh, yeah, that means that you have forgotten something. Right, right. Uh-huh. And uh, it helps bring it back out, but it's there. Yes. Uh-huh. And so that's, a, that's wonderful work that you're doing there, too. But, yeah, that's what I, I work with therapy with a lot of people. Yeah. On, well, see, the, the different thing, though, most, well, the majority of people, when they come into a life, though, uh, all of the memories of what has happened before is blanked out. That's and that's more or less of the safety valve, because they said it would be too difficult for us to function if we remembered all of these things. It would be, and uh, the world at one point wasn't ready for all this knowledge that's coming forth now. <laughs> uh, uh, I expected somebody to ask me, how long, uh, well, at uh, the conference recently in Orlando, someone asked me, he says, how long have you been working on this book? And I thought it sounded uh, amusing when I said 300 years. I've actually been wanting to write this book for 300 years. When I was uh. in the astral, I wanted to bring this knowledge back with me. Of course, it wasn't the time, and of course, it didn't happen in these other lives. But this time, uh, not only this last astral experience I had, but... Uh, uh, it, uh, the, the other ones also, it, uh, and, and then the uh, incarnations. It, it, the more I concentrated on it, worked with it in this life, and with assistance, uh, a fantastic thing has started to come through. Uh, that's an important part of worlds beyond death. Not only does it tell us about higher vibrating worlds, but also has a various spiritual exercise one can do to help them remember for themselves those things described. You see, not only in some of the descriptions of the astral, uh, size that I will give with them, that they perform it, and they can actually, with the reading, can remember the description I give. They can actually remember some of the uh, uh, the things I describe. I've had uh, many people tell me, um, I I saw that someplace. Where did I see that? Uh-huh. I, did I see that in television? Where did I see that? You know, <laughs> I said, "Well, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a little part of your of your subconscious, hidden, hidden deep inside of you." Uh-huh. Uh, I have people tell me that too, and they read my books and they say, "This is something I know, and I don't know where I know it." That's that's but that's a very important yes something in them. That's very important. Uh, uh, we uh, have the knowledge, and sometimes we don't know where it came from, but we just know things, you know. Oh, yeah. And I think it's important what you said a little bit ago, too, is that uh, when we're all coming up with the same information from different sources... That's certainly a good sign. ...it shows that there is validity to it. Yes. Because otherwise we would have conflicting information, we'd be contradicting each other. But uh, all of our work, the people that uh, are in this field, seem to to be complementing each other with this, even though it's worded different, we are all finding out the same thing. And it's, it's, it really is amazing. It really is amazing. Uh-huh. Um, but like I said, uh, a few hundred years ago, you couldn't have brought it out. You would have been uh, imprisoned or killed. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, something I read the other day, well, I saw it on television, actually, was about Galileo. Um, he was pulled for, for, for his writing. He was pulled in front of the Inquisition yes. and sentenced to life imprisonment, but it, it was at his home, but he couldn't leave his home. He couldn't go into his own yard without the church's approval. Uh, so life imprisonment in his home, and upon his death, was condemned, officially church condemned to hell. <laughs> and his great crime was, he said... The Earth went around the sun. Yes. Oh, well, there you are. So, so uh, me uh-huh. coming out then wouldn't well, have, wouldn't have been a good try, time. <laughs> he even tried to get the church officials to look through his telescope. Right. Yes. Yes. 
and he even, do it because uh, even though he said, I'll show it to you, and he, they wouldn't look look at it. That, right. Uh, they don't want to know. I do it, believe they, didn't they say recently, though, that he has been exonerated by the church after all? Oh, well, I certainly uh, hope so. After all these hundreds of years. That's the case. <laughs> uh, the the More about the book, the world beyond death actually works at several levels. Uh-huh. It starts off as showing us we aren't men or women like we think we are. Yeah. We are really little gods. Mm-hmm. We have the ability to perform great miracles, and we, we can do it. And, and some of these other books that are coming out, like uh, all the, I always, everybody tells me about the secret, the secret. Have you seen the secret? Well, actually, it's, this actually talks about the same thing that, that the book of secret does. It, uh, you're, the funny we, thing about the secret is that it's no secret. Right, it is no secret. Yes, but that's the information. And I tell my family it is no secret. <laughs> been a, that information has been around since the 1800s. Right. And she just took that 1800 uh, information and made it into a new book, and people mm-hmm. think it's new. But we, for hundreds of years, people have been telling us we can create with our minds. Of course, of and course. And we can uh, you know, make our own reality. Uh, we don't got, realize our own power. Yeah. We've got the ability to perform many great miracles, too. At, uh, at the first level, we learn how to let spiritual energy energy flow through us, actually allowing us to pass out miracles. Uh, there's one exercise in the book where you create, you might be familiar with it, some call it the umbrella, some call it the, the sword, uh, but this energy around you. You, you put an, an aura around you, and as you go yeah. out, uh, you can walk past somebody and affect them. Yes, it improve, does. Improve their, yes, improve their life for the better. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really uh, spiritual en- energy that's passing out the miracles. But being little gods, we learn how to be perfect channel to let spirit pass through us, reach out and touch someone, mm-hmm. passing a ma- miracle unto them. Uh, at the second level, we actually explore the astral plane, describing completely all the wonderful places and things that exist there. It is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've even had some people remember some things, even while I'm describing them to them. Uh, you see, we all already have seen these wonderful worlds. We saw them and experienced them on our journey to the physical. We, Unlike what religion would have us believe, we are not born in sin and sinful mortals on a slippery road to some fictitious hell yeah. trying to become divine. We are divine creations that have come here to get some schooling. Yes, this is a school. We're here to mm-hmm. learn lessons. And uh, uh, we've uh, all seen these wonderful, wonderful places. Uh-huh. And uh, so as I describe them, some people will probably remember it. And, all, and also when you do the exercise, if you don't remember right off, when you do an exercise, uh, slowly things will, will start coming back to them. See, that's one thing I've written about and talked about, too, is what I've been told. There is no right. There is no wrong. There is no sin. It's no. just experiences and lessons and how we react and how we do we learn them or do we have to take the grade over again. Well, that's it exactly, too. Yes, it goes into that also. Uh, there, uh, it's silly. Everybody thinks there's some kind of, uh, of a yeah. hell where you're, after you die, your physical body is somehow magically... Uh, rises and goes to hell with you, so I could be tortured. <laughs> but uh, uh, the uh, uh, there are karmic energy units that actually uh, correct. We think we're being punished when something happens, but that isn't the case. We're learning a lesson. We're uh, we're correcting things that might be wrong. Yeah, and that's that's all it is. Everything is uh, is either a blessing or a correction because this is a school, and uh, like I said, it's. Uh, we are little gods. We are just like you take a stick a stick into a, a flame of fire and say, "Well, this isn't the fire, but it is the fire." Well, we are like that. We are sparks from divinity. Yes. And even though we are not God, we are God. It's strange as yeah, it sounds. Yeah. That's why spiritual teaching sounds so strange. <laughs> but. Uh, huh? And there is no hell. No, of course not. No, of course I, not. but I found it, it in couldn't, my work. That's yeah, it, it, it would be a total possible. In fact, that's going when I'm going to talk at the uh, 
at the conference is actually going to be uh, very amusing because I'm going to tell a few stories about uh, the, the people that did believe in hell. And, uh, <laughs> uh, real quick, I'll tell you one. Uh, the, uh, there was a sweetest little old lady, and she believed she was going to hell. And I, I, she was just so sweet and wonderful and giving and loving, you know. And I said, well, there is no hell. But uh, even uh, if there was, why would you think you're going? And her eyes got big. She said, oh, I was young once. I said, well, I said, well that's hardly a reason for anybody to go to hell. <laughs> and uh, then I explained about esoteric science, about the interlocking planes, the uh, went into great ex explanations, great depth explaining the, the spiritual energy where planes couldn't exist without a plane above it. Uh, the physical world couldn't exist if there wasn't an astral plane. It wouldn't exist at all. Yeah. And anyway, and explained it to her, and it's what made sense. Mm -hmm. And she was still a little upset. And I said, why are, you, why, do, why are you upset about now? And she says, you just don't get it. There are so many people that need to go to hell. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you sweet lady, you. <laughs> but yeah. she's right. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes the only uh, way, way we ever feel better about something when uh, bad people get over on us is thinking, well, they're going to go to hell, you know. That's the only uh, good thing, good feeling we get out of it. And here, I've taken that away. But there, while there is no hell, there is karma and there is the physical universe. Oh, definitely. And, that's and what they say. I tell people, what goes around comes around, and, and that's why we have to learn to be good to each other, because what we what we sow, we will reap. Oh, definitely. And that's the only uh, negative part, is if we have to repay that negative karma. Yeah. But it's all lessons, is what it is, anyway. And uh, we... Uh, but, um, so, you know, we're on the same page, anyway, because yeah, I... Yeah, yeah. I've been doing this for 40 years, and I keep finding that it just keeps being re-emphasized over and over again. And i found many places on the other side, too, that you can go to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, you, get, you go where you're supposed to go according to your vibration and your frequency. That's it exactly, too. Um, people have said, well, when you die, uh, you go to the astral. For the most part, most people do, but uh, you could go higher. Yeah. Uh, they say, well, is there reincarnation? I don't want to get born again. Well, it, there is reincarnation, but it isn't a, a necessary thing that's going to go on forever, you know. Well, uh, you I have would to say, keep coming back as long as you have karma to be repaid. Yeah, yeah. If and you, I would say for most people... All back, you know, I tell them, you pay it all back and try not to make any more, yeah. then maybe you won't have to come back. Of course. We... <laughs> uh, especially everybody that's listening now, I would say probably this is your last life here. You wouldn't, if you were not spiritually minded, you wouldn't be listening to this. You wouldn't be reading these books. Uh-huh. And uh, so they're very... Quite, we, right now is a very important time to be alive because people are beginning to wake up. And they're no longer killing writers for saying, writing the truth because uh, they want to know the truth. They want to know everything. Yeah. And uh, it's, it is spreading, because I go all over the world, and I see it happening everywhere. And people's minds are beginning to open up, and it, it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. We're, I tell people to think for themselves. Exactly. I think the Buddhists, they have a, a saying, um, a thousand monks, a thousand religions. Everybody is their own path. There is no wrong path. No. And I never attack any religion, because uh, that's what level they're at. That's what and, I tell people. That's where they are. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. Whenever they get ready to ask questions, then we have answers. We're not supposed to convert anybody. And, and that's true for us, even in our, like, receiving information in dreams and what all that. Even yeah. spirit won't give us more than we're ready for at any yeah. time. That's and when we're ready, uh, it'll come. Uh-huh. They say when the, te the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. uh, do you remember in the book about Antares? He actually, he's a spiritual brother of mine, and he was not a, a wonderful, kind, and gentle master. Uh, Antares, the lesson he contributes to the book is that it doesn't matter how what you've done in your past, uh, because he didn't have a glorious record, although he's a ma he achieved mastership, he didn't have a glorious past. Yeah. He... Uh, but 
he taught that it doesn't you everybody is going to evolve uh, uh -huh. the longer you fight it the longer you're going to stay in, in here in, in this physical hell uh, in the beginning of the book I, at one point I, I one of the little subtitles I use is welcome to outpost hell uh -huh. because that's what hell means it means school hell is only school it talks about the lower worlds instantly they say oh there's something inside the earth well that's kind of stupid it means lower vibrating yeah in fact the astral the causal the etheric um, planes are still lower worlds because they still carry a negative charge and uh, until you get to the to the, soul, the soul plane the fifth plane where you overcome where, where you're uh, where there is no negative charge, and that's what is called the God worlds for that reason. But when you say lower vibrating, uh, so even even when you progress and don't come back to the physical, and the astral it's a school, and the causal it's a school, the school is better, it's more enlightening, um, but it's still a school. You will learn, you will expand. Uh, hopefully we can go through these uh, planes while we still are living in, in the phys our physical present physical life. So when the time comes for our transition, Oh, maybe we could go right onto this old plane. Yes, they always say you hope you'll get back to the, you hope you'll go higher, but if nothing else, you'll go back to the level you were. You yeah. You don't want yeah. to go down lower than you were. Yeah, we, we all, uh, you will a advance. But you can't go higher until your vibrations have reached that Exactly. Point. Um, what happens when you're alive? You're in your, to in your aura. But to not to evolve, you become stagnant. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. In your aura, you actually carry uh, four other bodies. You've got your physical body you can see. Yeah. In your aura body, you have your astral body, your causal body, your etheric body. And you could only reach those planes by using that particular vibration. The aura is a fantastic thing. It's different vibrations in it, uh, of energy, uh, spiritual energy. Um, that's why I never was really into astral projection because that means you're tearing the sheath apart. You're tearing your astral body away from the other bodies. Whereas an in inner movement, you can move as a unit and go to any plane at any time, uh, back and forth through them. Uh, but when you keep an inner movement, you don't necessarily... We, we think of it in physical terms. You think, oh, I'm going to go flying... It's not necessarily so. We are already attuned. Right now, uh, we're attuned to the etheric and the causal planes, and we could receive information from them. You might not hear it in your ears, but you will all of a sudden know it. You yes, uh -huh. And that's what your spiritual growth is based on, the, this vibration receiving this energy and lessons from those particular planes. Um, but even with all this, uh, world beyond death still goes a deeper understanding than... than than most people are used to. After the astral, we explore and describe the causal plane, the etheric, and then the soul plane. It then even moves into higher dimensions that we have hardly ever uh, uh, go into. Well, the and ones who do usually don't come back to where they can tell people because they just stay there or keep going. They would. They, you yeah. would keep. You would keep progressing. And that's why we don't usually hear about them. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, I doubt very few would be willing to come back into this life just to write a book. <laughs> <Come back. laughs> uh, and all of that is in just the first section of the book. In the second section, we learn more about the science of how and why everything works. It goes into even deeper detail about what all the spiritual planes are like. And we learn more about the capital city of the astral and what it's like. And we learn about great and wonderful beings at the various levels. Uh huh. Distance while we're still here on Earth. Um, some people say, "Oh, when I, in the book, I make it clear I, I have spiritual experience." Uh, both uh, one time you asked me, he says, "Well, uh, how do you how do you receive this knowledge from these individuals?" And I've told you that uh, sometimes it's face to face, and sometimes uh, it's purely like a, a spiritual matter where I'm taken and shown something. Uh, but uh, we... Okay, but the main thing, it is not channeling. Like, cause I get a lot of channel books, and this is different than that. This is different than channeling, yes. 
uh, I've I've known some wonderful. I, I know one particular wonderful channeler, but uh, no, this is uh, just uh, I call it spiritual intervention, where you can uh, learn things. Um, well, a lot of it was memories, too. Because I, I remember in the first chapter, I believe it was, you said as you were dying in the other life and you went to the other side and you were coming back, you kept saying, I'm not going to forget. You can't make me forget. Right, right, uh, right. That was, that's very unusual because usually that's part of the requirement. But you're uh, saying that I'm going to remember what it's like over here. There is a cleansing process at which is described wow. in there where everything's washed away. Yes. And that terrified me because this time I wanted to people to know uh, because things uh, there, we're so primitive and I wanted people to know what the truth was, uh, how spiritual energy passes down through the plains. Uh, earlier I mentioned that uh, we are uh, divine beings that we're not mortals trying to climb up, but we are divine beings that have actually been sent away to school, and we will return to the higher planes. And um, the question that I ask myself in the book and then I answer it is, well, why, can't we, why couldn't we just all of a sudden do it automatically? Why do we have to go to school? And why can't we just be gods and have it awakening? Uh -huh. uh, but that would lack compassion uh, and the, the, the kindness and the love of, of the, the various planes of the spiritual energy, it would be like a, a, a spoiled child born into a rich family. Mm -hmm. they, they're not really, don't really experience the things that well, they... Well, in, in my books, I've t I asked them, I said, if you can learn so much over there, why do we have to come to Earth? Mm -hmm. They said, because here we can learn it much faster. Yes. Because over there, it's like book learning versus hands-on experience. Uh, that's another thing. There's another exercise. There's many exercises in there that do various different things. But you can um, reach out and get assistance from people uh, like in the astral. Uh, make contact with them because you're doing them a favor too. You can in the astral. It's a place of peace and contentment and very little opportunity to advance during this rest period. The physical is the, the boiling pot where you can just shoot right up through the stars. And by coming to help you, to assist you, they also will uh, be able to, you, you'll be helping them also. So there, there is spiritual help. Um, oh, uh, you, you probably believe in guides and guardian angels. Oh, definitely. Um, That's what I consider help. I, um, I mentioned Eve Annabelle. Uh, uh, we, she, she uses that name now because in one life she was Eve and in another life she was Annabelle. And uh, she is uh, my biocentric soulmate. Now what I mean by biocentric is when we leave the divine planes to come down into the negative world, negative and positive world, uh, when we are not a soul, Right now, we are not a soul. You think we are, but we're not. We are half of a soul. If we were a complete soul, we would be both male and female. So the soul is split at the fifth. So now, uh, the well, the technical name of the, the divine spark is a monad. The monad breaks down into uh, three consciousnesses. Yeah. Uh, it the, 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 would be the male, the female, and then the higher self, which accumulates what you've done in this world. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when, so all this talk about soulmates, it is based on a real thing. You are actually part of the same soul. It isn't, we think of it as romance. Oh, we just get along so good. No, you are part of the same soul. And you're working together to advance uh, your own higher consciousness of the two of you. Well, even, and that's called biocentric. That's what biocentric means. I was going to give a more technical name for soulmate. Uh -huh. uh, and, well, she is, is uh, my biocentric soulmate, and uh, I attribute all anything that I do, anything I achieve in this world, uh, to her and to spirit. I, I only provided the channel 
for her to bring spirit through to me. And uh, she, um, uh, I, I also mentioned that uh, we're not in the world together. Uh, you, you might think that soulmates are always together. We were together in two lives. Uh, in this particular incarnation, I I'm in, came to the physical, and she is in the astral. And uh, I mention in the book that if your soulmate is not presently in the physical world with you, chances are they are your guardian angel. That's a very That's strong possibility. It's huh? a very good strong yes. And uh, in addition to that, there is another one. Uh, I I am only permitted to refer to him as spiritual guide. He is the one that always has come when uh, during a a period of transition of dying where uh, he will meet me and uh, the the death experience is actually a wonderful and beautiful thing it's not scary at all yeah I've written about it so and I lecture on that you know, yes it isn't it really isn't but I always tell people I don't want to encourage them to speed it up but uh, well it's not to be feared at all and, and well it, and it also talks about the suicide that don't try anything stupid like that because what you do is you condemn yourself you just go back and you'll do it again and it'll be harder yeah that's what i tell people you yeah. don't get out of it no but it is what i've been told that's what i try to tell people about this there's nothing painful about it yeah. it is a beautiful experience i was told it's like getting up from one chair and sitting down in another chair it's so easy to just slide out of the body uh one of my uh, spiritual teachers told me that uh, people don't always even experience the same method. Uh, some say they see a white light. Some say uh, they're met by a beautiful angel. Some say yeah. they wake up in a beautiful garden. Yeah. Uh, I have even heard that there were some people that would wake up and actually still be think they're in a hospital bed. Yeah. They were so, so, so delicate. It had to be brought on slowly to understand that there is no such thing as death, you know, to understand that they just weren't in the physical anymore. Yeah, I've heard all of these examples. Yeah. I've been yeah. doing this for so many years. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you, you'll wake up. It, they've always done gently because you do. Well, I was told whenever you come into a life, you have a guide or a guardian angel that is assigned yes. to you. And they are with you your entire life to help take care of you. Yes. And they will be there when you die. Sometimes yes. you'll have friends and relatives to meet you and take you where you're supposed to go, but if you don't have, you will have your guide. Yes. Uh, it's you'll never be alone one. anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, There'll always be somebody to be with you. And, uh, and this is part of like you're talking about if they're confused yes. when they die, then yeah, they are handled very gently. Yes. That's why there isn't anything to fear, really. No, um, we're always protected. Uh -huh. That's always why protection. I don't like that the church instills the fear mm -hmm. to where they are, really, they're terrified to die because they all think they're going to hell. Yeah. At that way, the church is not doing a service to people when it, it uh, makes them die like that. One of the saddest things was my grandfather. He was a wonderful man, but he... Growing up, he was actually a very, very old man when I was still young. And growing up in the old-time church, he was told he was a sinner and he was going to hell. Even though he was a wonderful man, it didn't matter because everybody was going to hell, I guess. <laughs> and uh, he was, I would talk to him and I would tell him, Grandpa, there is no hell. And even though he loved me with every ounce of his fiber of his body, he, he still couldn't you know he still was afraid what if what if well uh i being i was kind of young the day he died in the hospital room my but i heard my father tell my mother that she saw such fear in his eyes when he died and that's so sad mm -hmm. because it, it is a wonderful thing well it was about two weeks after that all of a sudden um my grandfather made contact with me to let me know there is no hell. I was right. Uh, he, he did this by, uh, I call it the finger in the back phenomenon. Maybe some people have it. Uh, you feel it's like somebody's poking a finger in your back. <laughs> I don't know how common that is, but it's happened to me a couple of times. 
Well, he was one individual that did, and it was his way of letting me know there was no hell. Well, it makes sense there is no hell. Uh, well, another thing, God is not a man. No. And, and God isn't a female either. No. It, but it makes sense if God was a mortal, it would be a female. It would create universes, you know. But <laughs> even spirit is not God. Spirit is the voice of God. Yes. And um, so, and like I said in um, in your this month in your internet, uh, um, I was trying to explain God to my mother, and I told her it wasn't a man, it wasn't a woman. And she says, well, what is God? And I said, even my teachers, my spiritual teachers in the other world, didn't know what God was yet. They just didn't know. They just knew that all of this stuff passes down from a great, powerful source that even they hadn't been able to uh, comprehend yet. And uh, we moved right along in the book and... uh, it, it goes into, like I said, each plane, there are many spiritual exercises. Uh, there's one section with the most asked questions. Uh, it's also interesting questions. I think any anybody that would call in with a question would probably be answered there. Um, it's like I said, a lot of people don't call in. They tell me they just want to listen. So Yeah, I, well, that's like me, too. I don't really like to partake. I like to sit back and, and yeah, absorb. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but, you know, you were talking about the figure in the back. I had uh, many people tell me they are, they have other sensations that they know when their loved ones are there. Oh, yes. There could be other physical sensations, too, that they, and sometimes it can even be a smell in the house or something. Mm-hmm. But they have other ways of knowing when their loved ones are around in the spirit form. Exactly. And, uh-huh. um, uh, uh, the Christians at the Catholic, I believe it is, that one of their ways of contact is through smell. They will smell an aroma and know associated with a particular saint. And that's very probable because often I will uh, I have a certain beautiful scent around me. Yeah. And although I'm not too sure what it is, all of a sudden it's gone, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I have experienced that. And not that I always could understand exactly why or what it was. Um, but as you'll see in the book, too, I have many... Uh, we, we call it supernatural because we don't know anything uh, yeah, we just different. Yeah, we everything together, really. Yeah. There's science we know and science we don't know. Uh-huh. And the science we don't know we call supernatural. <laughs> uh, just um, recently, a couple months ago, I was in my home. And I heard a noise outside. And uh, I didn't pay attention. I just stayed inside. And I heard another noise again, like something banging against the house. So I went out to see what it was. And it's quiet out. There's nobody around. It's pitch black dark. And as I'm standing there in the dark, in my parochial vision of my left eye, in the corner of my left eye, it's like I see next to my left, uh, on the outside of my left foot, it looks like a little white kitten without looking right directly at it. I, it, it was this little white ball of kitten down there. And I thought, well, uh, maybe that kitten was what <laughs> made the noise, you know. And as I looked down to look at the kitten, it shot right in front of me at a 45-degree angle. It shot out and disappeared. Hmm. Now, um, what did it mean? I don't know. <laughs> maybe it was just to, to tell you about it tonight. I have no idea. But we are always surrounded by miracles, and we just have to pay more attention to them. Yeah. Uh, we uh, uh, often you'll see uh, lights, colored, different colored lights in the corner of your eye. And if you will, usually most people just pass it off as a trick of the eye or something. But uh, we are we are constantly protected. We receive. Another question was why don't we receive blessings like it? Miracles and blessings like in the old days. Well, we do. Probably more now than ever before. We're not aware of it, but that's okay. You you can receive a blessing even though you're not aware of it. Well, you know, they have those TV shows uh, on the cable that deal with miracles. So they are still around. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's usually just something that people can't explain. Yeah. It's what it is. But I think if you look closer at it, you'll will realize, you know, with the paranormal, what yeah. we're dealing with. 
we are don't do have it around us all the time, and we don't really pay attention to it. And, and you know something else? Um, I think it's important people understand that. Let's say you're having a dream, and the dream is so wonderful. You feel so good in it. There's beautiful colors, beautiful aromas. And when you wake up, you say, oh, that was a wonderful dream. I wish it could have been real. The chances are, if it really impressed your consciousness, it was real. Yeah. You have actually experienced the higher plane. And the chances are you received an initiation. And uh, <clears throat> unlike uh, cults, where uh, you receive initiations for serving so much time and all this, you progress. Maybe you've progressed and maybe you haven't. Uh, this, the, the spiritual initiation raises you to, the, to a certain level. That means that you will never again go below that level. And uh-huh. uh, in, a, in your lifetime, you can receive many spiritual initiations. That's why I say you may work, work your way through the various planes. Not that they're not wonderful. Wonderful. I, I wouldn't mind spending thousands of years in them. They're wonderful places. Uh-huh. Uh, but if you truly want to get into the God world, you know, but yeah. we, we do, spirit, and that's how we're all made aware that we have spiritually advanced. Well, see, I have found that we do go out of our body every night, and we do travel and journey to... When you go to sleep, you go into the dream bubble, and it can be a couple of inches above your body or three feet away, and that's another reason that I know you, everybody's tried it, because uh, you try to run. And you can't. Yeah. And that's because of the walls of your dream bubble. That's why you can't run in a dream. You get all bogged down. If it, if it didn't bog you down, you'd go shooting across the universe, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you are actually in the dream bubble. Uh-huh. But that's why a lot of people, when they wake up and have these very vivid memories, they are places they actually have journey to while they're sleeping. Yes. And they could be different uh, worlds. And... Uh, I always think if you remember a dream and it really impresses itself on you, then there, it has a different meaning. There's more to it there. Yes. Than you think there is. There is so much in this in this world that uh, we just pass off, and uh, there are so many miracles are coming to us, and we've just uh, temporarily forgotten about them, or not paid much attention to them. Mm-hmm. Well, I mentioned Eve Annabelle, that's my soulmate, and I like also in the, in the book you'll meet a spiritual guy that I've had for over 45 years. His spiritual name is Dap Wren, and he's been tremendous assistance to me in the physical. Yeah. And then there are two others, um, Antares and uh, N. N is spelled E N. Antares and N, and they both seem to be historical figures who entered into my life at this time to teach the importance of our relationship between us and the higher spheres. That's, and that's what they contribute to me. And uh, Dap Ren and Antares, I, I both have uh, uh, are physical masters. Antares now has uh, transized. He's back in uh, the astro or higher. Um, but he did offer a great deal of information that you, you'll read about, things I say about Jesus in the book. Uh, and I also make it clear, when you talk about spiritual matters, it's kind of difficult to uh, speak about any one particular religion, because all religions are all paths, are fine, you know? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. But I clarified some points to show how we have to expand our knowledge. There's so much about Jesus that we didn't know. And I use that to show uh, the things he really taught. He taught the same things we're talking about now. Yes, I've written books on... on I know, I know, and, and they're wonderful books. But, you and, know, I did want to make a remark. You know, one of my authors is the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. And in the book he wrote, Gandhi said, no man is a, per, is a spiritual being unless he has studied all of the religions of the world and then makes up his mind. Because he said all religions have faults and all religions have good points. None of them are perfect. And you should study them and then decide what you want to believe. <laughs> well, you know, if you go, everybody say, well, what's the meaning of life? Um, mm-hmm. If you go looking for the meaning of life outside of yourself, you're only going to get some interpretation of what someone else thinks the meaning of life is. Uh, you are your own path. Yeah, and what do you think the meaning is? Well, 
No, I mean for yourself, you know, because you said people ask you that. What what is the answer you come up with? Well, the meaning of life is that uh, it's not like we believe. It, we are divine beings. Yeah. We are here in a school. Uh-huh. And um, actually, that's why there's so many problems in this world. Uh, it's man's inhumanity to man. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that's the secret of life. Uh, once you overcome man's inhumanity to man, you, you won't uh, even need to be here. Uh, look at oil prices and oh, it's just endless, endless things, uh, uh, greed and war. and uh, mm-hmm. it, it, But it, we're supposed to be learning things from these things anyway, learning lessons. Well, I suppose that after you've learned them, you just get sick of them. <laughs> <laughs> But they keep on and they just don't stop, you know. We, uh, that's why I say, I, I, if you remember uh, at one point where when I died and, and when I transized in the last life, I was talking about I didn't want to come back. Well, no, 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 well, uh, that was later. Uh, I didn't want to leave. When my uh, spiritual guide came to get me, I couldn't believe that I died because it just wasn't possible. I just had a bump on the head. How could I be dead, you know? In the other and, life, yeah. Yeah, and, and my other life, yes. And uh, I was fighting desperately to come back. I didn't want to leave. Uh-huh. But after I spent some time, well, then it was decreed that if I wanted to come back, I would be allowed to. And I had, had expressed I wanted to bring knowledge in, back into this world about the higher planes, especially the astral. Yeah. And... Uh, it was more or less decreed, I suppose. I call it the court of Yama, which is, that's a good thing. It's a blessing. It's not anything punishment. It's nothing like that. It's just a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> okay. thing. Uh, where uh, I could come back and, re- and if I wanted to, and I would have spiritual assistance and release a joining. Uh, I was told that we were entering a spiritual evolution. And... Um, and you're more aware of this probably than a lot of people. We are. Things are changing. We're becoming more spiritual now. Yes. Uh-huh. And I was come back to. Uh, I wanted to come back to take part in it. But after I'd been gone for a while, and it was time for me to come back, I didn't want to come back. <laughs> I said I've changed my mind. I don't want to go back. Uh, I want to. I want to go on. I was actually moving on. Eve Annabelle has already been in the uh, returned and she was and I uh, we had worked our way through the etheric planes we understood well, when I say work through them I say understand the the science understand the teachings the principles and actually the teachings and principles aren't all that complicated uh, it's okay. simply uh, I'm watching the clock and we're running out of time okay. that's why I'm because uh, if I don't stop at a certain time, they will pull the plug. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say we are divine beings and don't believe any anything that's otherwise. We are divine. Okay. Well, right, but if anyone wants to contact you, how how can they do that? If they wanted to ask me questions? Well, yeah, they would want to write to you or, or contact you in any way. Because I noticed in the book you don't have your address, but I think you wanted to be contacted through through our company, didn't you? Uh, yes, actually, uh, I don't spend a lot of time on the internet. Um, I'm usually writing or traveling or doing other things, oh. and uh, but my daughter handles the internet for me. Um, but do you want to give that out just in case if anybody would want to email you? Or oh, I'm not too sure I'd be that accurate. Uh, I'll tell you what, you can give it to anyone that calls you. I know you have it. All right, but I'm if anybody sure, but wants to contact you, they can yes. write you through our company. Uh, in fact, uh, I have received some things already uh, okay. through through you. Uh, right. Well, I, the name of the book is World Beyond Death, and it's, it's this Grant Peeler is the author, and he will be one of our speakers at the conference next week. And the book is available in the bookstores. If you can't find it, then ask the bookstore to order it for you. They'll be able to get it very easily. Okay, we're coming okay, to time it's, now. It's also on Amazon.com, too. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere. So we're coming to the time. We've got to stop now. But I want to thank everybody for listening tonight, then. And I hope you're going to plan to come to the conference. Okay, Grant, we're going to have thank to you, say Delora, goodbye and now. Thank you, everyone else.
Good Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.